it was probably a good idea to stop firing nukes into space. Decades after they exploded in space, the true effect on Earth of Cold War nuclear bomb tests is only now beginning to be fully understood by scientists. According to recently declassified documents, nuclear weapons tests conducted by the United States and Soviet Union between 1958 and 1962 had an impact on space weather. Nuclear bombs detonated in space created geomagnetic disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field. They also called electric fields to form on the planet's surface. Some tests even created a layer of charged particles held in place by the Earth's magnetic field called radiation belts. These man-made phenomena caused an aurora to form over the equator rather than at the poles. They also disrupted satellites and caused electrical currents that damaged power grids. Thankfully, America and the USSR stopped chucking nuclear bombs into space more than 50 years ago. According to NASA, this information about man's effect on space weather in the 1960s can hopefully help us better understand what's going on around our planet today. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. We've still got so much to learn about space. Light bursts seen on Earth finally explained. And no, it's not aliens. It was astronomer Carl Sagan who first noticed flashes of light on our home planet back in 1993. But the mystery of what they were would not be cracked until 24 years later. A NASA camera about a million miles from Earth has been capturing strange light bursts reflecting off the planet's surface, appearing both over land and water. Researchers found more than 800 glints in images taken from the Discover spacecraft between June 2015 and August 2016 and theorized they were caused by reflected sunlight. The bursts were limited to certain spots, where the angle between the Sun and Earth is the same as the angle between Earth and the spacecraft, allowing the reflected light to be picked up. The source of the reflection appeared to be ice crystals in high-altitude cirrus clouds. Sunlight would bounce off horizontally oriented particles and create the bright flashes. With that mystery solved, the researchers are now looking to study the ice crystals in hopes of determining whether they have an impact on how much light passes through the atmosphere. Something is making space music on the dark side of the moon. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff! We have a liftoff! 32 minutes! All except a few stubborn nutjobs know that NASA astronauts landed on the moon during the 1969 Apollo 11 mission. Many of us have also seen the movie Apollo 13, in which astronaut Tom Hanks saves the day before going on to find Private Ryan. But many don't know a lot about Apollo 10, the final dress rehearsal test mission sent up before Neil Armstrong put his boots on the moon and gave us this iconic sound clip. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Apollo 10 didn't land. Its mission was to orbit the moon, and that meant going over to the dark side. For over an hour, the astronauts were invisible and inaudible to Houston as they went around the far side of the moon. But while mission control couldn't hear anything during that hour or so, the guys on the spacecraft heard a lot, stuff the public is just starting to hear about since for decades, NASA's archives were classified. The Apollo 10 crew reported hearing weird sounds they likened to some kind of strange space music. The space music sounded like this, and NASA also recorded the crew's reaction. Do you hear that? That whistling sound? <laughs> There's plenty of theories for this howling weird space music. Magnetic fields, the atmosphere interfering with radios. But here's the thing. The moon doesn't have a magnetic field and doesn't have enough atmosphere to carry sound. So, pick your theory. Some unknown boring science thing? Alien whale songs? Or maybe, just maybe, a Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders concert from Mars. We're gonna go with Ziggy. Your pick? Horseshoe-shaped UFO sighting near International Space Station. Yet yeah, another, uh, UFO has been sighted outside the International Space Station. On April 19th, NASA's live feed caught sight of a horseshoe-shaped object floating alongside the station. Seconds later, the feed cut out. It remained down for an hour before resuming to show what looks like the same object in the distance. Conspiracy theorists tracking the feed are calling it a cover-up. They believe cameras caught sight of a UFO and before long, NASA intentionally cut the feed 
saying that the only time the feed tends to cut out is when these objects appear. But a number of things could have happened. Headquarters could have just been working too hard. Or perhaps it's what most U of O sightings have been, a lens flare. Better yet, it probably had nothing to do with NASA. Better yet, it probably was evidence that we truly are not alone. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Did NASA cut off an International Space Station camera feed showing UFOs leave Earth? A YouTube video claiming to show UFOs leaving Earth has gone viral. So what's the proof in the pudding? Are Mulder and Skelly on the case? Have our alien overlords finally come to take us back into that starry sky? This is video here. Can't see it? Don't worry, Mr. Enigma from YouTube has got you covered with a close-up. Here's a view of another one. And here's another view of our alien masters. The NASA feed from the International Space Station cuts off as the objects exit Earth's atmosphere. So far, the video has received over 800,000 views on YouTube. One commenter wrote in reply, NASA, never a straight answer. Another wrote, just another SpaceX try. And another references Mothra, the classical Japanese kaiju monster. Sick reference, dude. Details emerge about the mysterious Planet Nine. Although no one's actually seen the planet that supposedly lurks in the outer solar system, planetary scientists at the California Institute of Technology presented evidence for Planet Nine's existence in January. As a spacecraft orbiting Saturn recently returned with even more observations that support Planet Nine's existence, evidence seems to be mounting that a mystery planet truly does dwell out there. Scientists first predicted the possibility of Planet Nine after noticing dwarf planets in our solar system's Kuiper Belt had orbits that clustered toward the same direction. This strange alignment is best explained by a sizable object whose gravity tugs the dwarf planets into place. Its orbit is larger than orbits of other celestial bodies that we're more familiar with, completing a full orbit around the Sun every 20,000 years. To achieve the observed gravitational effect, Planet Nine's diameter is probably around four times the size of Earth's. Its mass is approximately ten times the Earth's mass. Scientists speculate that the planet is probably an ice giant similar in composition to Neptune and Uranus. Planet Nine appears to be nearer than scientists originally thought. It could come to as close as 200 times the distance between Earth and the Sun, or 200 astronomical units. Scientists also predict that Planet Nine's gravity may force additional objects in the Kuiper Belt into orbits perpendicular to its own. If the planet does prove to really exist, then we could reach it in as few as 20 years. Until then, the hunt continues for the evasive icy planet. Some scientists are now hoping to find it with the world's largest telescopes. Big Metal Balls from Space Either Planet Spaceball lost some of their precious balls over the weekend, or perhaps Vladimir Putin lost some of his as Russia races to colonize space. Several mysterious metal orbs originating from Russia crash landed in Vietnam's Yen Bai and Trang Quang provinces Saturday, giving locals quite the scare. Metal balls crashed down in northern Vietnam at around 6.30 a.m. on Saturday. The smallest, weighing 250 grams, smashed through the roof of a house. A six-kilogram sphere, proportionally similar to a basketball, fell in a garden. While the largest object, weighing 45 kilograms and akin in scale to an exercise ball, landed close to a stream. Investigators determined that all three balls are Russian-made compressed air tanks that likely fell from a rocket or aircraft. Because the balls are intact, they probably fell from an altitude of less than 100 kilometers. Strange balls like these three have landed in other places around the world. Several were reported in Spain and Turkey last November. Meanwhile, a military official said Vietnam would ask countries with space programs to exercise more caution. Or in other words, watch out where you put your damn 45 kilo space balls.